So my paper is called The Historical Evolution of the Cost of Social Reproduction in the United States, 1959 to 2012. And what I did is I started um, from the Marxist feminist social reproduction theory literature, which implies that the cost of socially reproducing labor power, so the cost of um, making sure that there's a, a labor force that is willing and able to go to work each day um, is greater than the cost of employing labor power from the perspective of the capitalist class. And so this actually poses an empirical question, which I thought um, would be really interesting to measure. So I, I I attempted to measure it in price terms, and I wanted to understand, so if there is this this difference between the cost of socially reproducing labor power and the cost of employing labor power, um, how much, how, how big is this um, discrepancy? And how has the relationship between these two things changed over time and evolved over time? And then finally, what's the role of the state, uh, the US state in this case in um, stabilizing and uh, subsidizing social reproduction processes? So. To answer this question, I had to create a empirical framework and I built on um, other Marxian uh, accounting methods, particularly that of Anwar Sheikh and Amit Tonak, um, and brought used um, data from the Bureau of Economic Analysis, uh, national income and product accounts, brought in household uh, production data. And what I found was that employers are paying for a decreasing share of total working class social reproduction, um, actually going from um, about 50% uh, in 1966 to uh, less than 40% in 2011. Uh, that was one of the key findings of this work. Um, and I also found that there, there's the persistence of household production in the reproduction of, of labor power, which is a um, argument that has been made by feminists, Marxist feminists for many, many years. So I think that this paper and the, and the conclusions that I draw from it matter for a number of reasons. The first is that we have some empirical evidence um, rooted in Marxist feminist theory and Marxian accounting, feminist Marxian accounting methods, that um, employers are skirting their responsibility to working class social reproduction by paying low wages, um, by not paying good social benefits or um, fringe benefits, and that this has a, a consequence in the distribution for the responsibility of social reproduction. So the way I think of it is if we're going to have a capitalist economy, then um, employers should be paying their share. And, and what I see is that they're paying a decreasing share for the, the responsibility of working class social reproduction, for which, with, without which there would be no capitalist production. Um, the second reason, the second important point of this paper is that it gives us a more nuanced understanding of what's going on in US neoliberalism. Um, so we see from my data that the state is actually playing a pretty important and increasingly significant role in working class social reproduction, despite all of the many attacks on the welfare state that have occurred since 1980 in the US. Um, and so this gives us a, a more nuanced and rich understanding of what's really happening um, between the state and employers in terms of who's, who's picking up the slack for um, working class social reproduction. And then the third important point I think is that it shows that um, the burden and the responsibility of working class social, rep social reproduction is falling to, to households. And of course we know that it's particularly the women within these households, um, the caregivers, that are making the greatest contribution and have been making the greatest contribution um, throughout the entire time that I study, um, despite changes in household technology, despite increasing women in the workforce, um, it's still the household and the, the caregivers within the households that are contributing the most. And that um, this has some implications in terms of how caregivers should be supported by policy and should be, um, rewarded for their contributions to societal social reproduction.
My paper is really just a first attempt to quantify and um, analyze social reproduction from an empirical point of view. Um, there are a number of uh, limitations and extensions that could be made for this paper. So um, I think some of the really interesting and exciting ones are around inequalities within the working class. So in this paper, I look at the working class as, as um, one group defined by their socioeconomic status in, in um, Marxian terms. And um, I, don't, I don't get into differences between um, race, class, uh, or sorry, race, uh, gender, um, age. And I think so looking at some of these uh, intersectional issues within the working class uh, is a really important avenue. Another question that I find very interesting that I hope will be pursued in this paper is um, the question of migration and remittances. This is not something that I was able to address with the data, um, but there's a whole uh, a whole question of what does it mean for, um, for immigrants who have been socially reproduced up to a certain point in another country to then come into the US, how would, how could that be accounted for? Um, and then there's a, a whole other host of questions in terms of um, measuring wealth, financialization, home ownership, um, tax policy. So there's, there's really a lot of places um, that this research I think could go.